Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I don't know about you, but I really like compact or mini series batteries. Well, I've got a budget friendly compact for you today. This is from Mirpal. It is their 12.8 volt, 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with a smart Bluetooth BMS. We'll check it out today and see if it's worth it. If you're looking for a full test channel interview on this Mirpal, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So before I run the capacitance on the mirror pile, I'm going to top the battery back off. It's been sitting for several hours off the charger, so I'm going to run the charger again to make sure the battery is completely full before beginning the capacity test. So here we go. All right, the charging has completed on the mirror pile. Looks like it went on cell over voltage protection, if you can see right there. So the BMS shut down any charging, so one cell was a little bit of a runner higher than the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the charger off. So see if we can see anything on that cell over voltage protection on this app. So the cell over voltage protection went away after a few minutes. So I got the cell data for you right here for your reference. We got one cell that's quite a bit lower than the rest. The cell one, two, and three are all pretty much even. The balancer is working right now, trying to bring them all back in line, but just give you some information before the test. The battery is at 13.91 volts, indicated by the smart Bluetooth BMS, and the standalone meter is showing 13.93. So I've got the battery connected to the capacity test rig, the same setup I always use. The energy meter has been cleared out, a little alpha inverter, energy monitoring shunt. So now I'm going to turn the inverter on, let that stabilize, then I'll apply the load and run the capacity on this battery. And the goal for the capacity test on the mirror pile is 300 amp hours or... 3,840 watt hours. All right, so let's begin the capacity test. I will apply the load to the battery. It's gonna be about a 55 amp load. So I'll let that stabilize to get you some final readings. All right, so the load's stabilized out. It's a battery charger charging another battery. So right at 51.7677 amps. The battery's still at 13.32 volts, roughly 689 watts of load on the mirror pile. And we'll check the Bluetooth too to see what it's showing. It's showing 50.8, 50.63 amps, 684, 85, 13.48 volts at the battery itself. So a large battery like this will take quite a while to discharge at 50 amps. So I will see you in roughly six hours. I'm gonna try to get you the halfway mark. So probably about three hours, I'll give you an update and see what this mirror pile is made of. So about to cross the estimated halfway mark on the battery now. I'll film it as we roll over. There it went. 1920 watt hours is the estimated halfway mark on this battery nominally. Showing 54% remaining on the app. And I did check on another app. They have the BMS capacity program in this battery at 308. So that's why we're seeing 54% instead of 50%. About to reach the rated capacity on the mirror pile, so I'll film live as we roll over. All right, there we went, 3840, so nominal capacity obtained. And then the Bluetooth app is showing 6% remaining. The battery is at 12.21 volts, 18 minutes remaining. All right, the capacity test is almost finished on the mirror pile. The voltage is starting to plummet off, so I'll film it live. All right, the inverter went off on low voltage. So what was our final real world usable capacity? 3977 watt hours, almost 311 amp hours out of the 300 amp hour rated mirror pal. Not too bad. So that would be 3977 watt hours divided by a nominal 12.8 volts. What did we get? 310.7 amp hours. And how much bonus does that give us? So we take our 39 77 divided by the nominal 38.40. So how much bonus? Uh, about three and a half percent bonus. So what comes with the Mirapile 300 amp hour battery if you decide to purchase one? Well, you get a set of M8 terminal bolts that are solid brass. You get a Bluetooth user manual to show you how to download the app and use the app for this battery and a basic user manual. Not a lot of information in this manual. Uh, it's okay. There's some specs in here. Let me show you the battery specs for this model. It's just a generic 100 to 330 amp hour listing right there for the battery pack parameters. So just some basic, you know, charge and discharge ratings and things like that. So pretty basic. 
and get some case dimensions for you on this compact or mini series if we're looking at the length of the battery right there we're roughly 13 and three quarters not including the carry handles and if we space out for the carry handles it's right at about 15 inches and the height of the battery not including the bump outs for the terminals nine and three quarters inches tall and the width of the case roughly seven and five eighths inches give you an overall look of the battery before the tear down portion as you can see we got nice rope handles on either side built to transport this battery it weighs close to 60 pounds so it's a little bit heavy but you know that's uh that's a lot of energy sitting right there in a compact package so we have a qc pass sticker uh, nice embossed positive and negative markings on top of the battery brass pass-through terminals right there and if we spin the battery around right here we have our bluetooth address right there so you can reference that that's your mac id uh capacity sticker i showed you that earlier in the video and then spin it around to the back right here and it's got a serial number right there and just some warnings and some compliance certificates so now time for the teardown portion on the mirror pile battery i will take the lid off this battery or attempt to and we'll take a look at it and see the build quality all right i got the cover most of the way cracked loose save the last little bit of glue for you like i always do so you can see it at the same time i am so there we go First thing I notice is looks like a little bit smaller wires uh, than normal for batteries of this caliber, this size. So notice this number right here on top of the battery. I'm assuming that's the factory test data, which would correspond with what I'm seeing on the Bluetooth program. They programmed it for 308 capacity and I got 310. Well, you may have noticed at the beginning of the test, I showed you the temperature of this battery. It was at 95 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So I got 310 amp hours due to the battery being much warmer than standard test conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have a QC pass sticker under the cover right there. And our positive lead is two 7 gauge 200 degree jacketed cables. And let me move you to the negative. I'm assuming the exact same thing on the negative. I'm going to try to get you a wire gauge on that. Those are 7 gauge wires. I can't get it on camera right now, but I can see down in here that that they are seven gauge on the negatives as well right there just out of reach of the camera right there but i can see it says seven so we got dual sevens on the negative as well but notice right there how when the case was assembled how those wires were kind of pinched down in there you can see the, the marks right there where the wires were kind of bound up on the negative side so just make a note of that we do have some sealant on top of the positive right there so that's good to see that it's not going to touch anything over here because it's sitting just like that and then the negative has some fiber tape on top of its terminal right there. So hydraulic connections, everything is extremely tight. So that's good to see right there. Even though I wish it had been a little bit larger wire size, but you know, that's the manufacturers, the way they do it sometimes. Here's our Bluetooth module taped down on top right here. Got a little bit of glue on the balance leads to that module right there, but there it is. So I was going to try to knock the cells, the whole assembly, out of this case, but I'm not going to be able to. The battery is fully potted, including the BMS. There is potting compound all around this battery, holding it down into the case. So I don't know if I'll be able to get the cells out. I'll try a couple more times to get it loose, but the BMS is kind of in that compound too. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it out without damaging the BMS. And we still have some testing to do so. And I've seen it before in other batteries, and it's like a hard, hardened up silicone sealant, kind of like... You'd, or polyurethane sealant you'd use on automotive applications and stuff like that. I'll put the screwdriver right there and you, you know, it's, it's solid. It's like a rock down in there. So I pulled some of the sealant off the positive terminal to check the bolts and stuff on the pass-throughs. They're using the same brass bolts inside the battery as they give you when you purchase the battery. So it appears they, they've got a surplus of brass bolts. So I'm going to take this epoxy board off now so I can access the cells a little closer and get some QR data if I can and check out everything else. So here's a view of the top of the cells right here. You can see the bus bars, They're pretty decent, uh, pretty wide, a little bit thinner than normal, but the width would make up for the thickness. So that's okay right there. The positive is tight. The negative is tight, not moving. So that's always good to see. I am going to remove the positive now and so I can fold all this out of the way so we can get a better look at everything. And they did use thread locker on the stud terminals. That's good. So looking at these cells, they appear to be in pretty good condition. You can see the coating on the outside is nice and shiny. Uh, the relief in windows are nice and clear. I don't see any issues going on there. 
Uh, the wire managements, I mean, it's there. And that's all I can say about that. They just did some fiber tape for the balance leads right there. Been nice to have it secured, you know, something like that. Just a little bit more organization. I always like to see good organization, but let's check out some of the, let's look at this laser weld right here. We'll just pick a random one. Laser welds look pretty good on this battery. Don't see any issues there. Let's check another one right here. That's yeah, pretty good there. And yeah, nothing, nothing going on bad with that. So that's good to see. And this battery's got three NTC sensors. One's chip on board on the BMS, and then we got two remotes right here. So both sensors are in the same position right there on the battery. So I'm gonna pull back this top cover right here just to look at one more thing on these cells. Just see if we only have just one layer of wrapping on the cell. Yeah, just one layer. Looks good. The aluminum's shiny and clean. Run these QR codes now, and we'll see if I can get any data. Here is a shot of one of the QR codes on the cells. This is the one I'm going to put through the scanner for reference. So if you want to look it up on your own as well, there are some numbers. 976 watt hour. So these are 305 nominal rated cells. QR code looks good and clean. Doesn't like a regrind or anything like that. So my QR scanner didn't pick up the manufacturer, but I did some more digging. This is a cell I scanned right here. These are Envision AESC cells. I have a couple of slides regarding the information of these cells. But one thing of note on the date codes, this is a 2022 date code. This one's a 2023 date code. 2022 date code and 2021 date code. So we've got different aged cells compiling this complete battery. See how clear and clean the relief windows are on this battery. So just make a note of everything, just showing you all I can on this battery. So I can't access the BMS, but I'll pull up a different app and give you all the information I can about this BMS that's in this mirror pile. It's a JBD BMS. You can see the model right there, SP04S, 200 amp BMS. There's the cell voltages with a partial recharge. There is the manufacturing date of the actual BMS right there. And see Dongjin JBD right there, SPO4S, two battery cycles. And the programming menu of the BMS, the total battery capacity is programmed at 308, uh, total cycle capacity 246. So there's your cell full voltage, your cell minimum. There's all your corresponding voltages to correlate with the display. And the balancer configuration start of 3.3 volts per cell, 15 millivolt differential to balance. And then the protection programs, there you go, charge over temp of 65, under temp of zero, discharge 75, and discharge under temp of negative 20. So there's all your values right there. And then the discharge overcurrent right here, 220 amps. And then their level two overcurrent protection, 280 amps and then level three short circuit protection 440 amps in the programming uh, so i'm going to check high temperature charge protection first even though i know it's programmed in the bms parameters there just want to prove that it's working so we'll watch the bluetooth display over here we should have a protection right there trigger and you'll see the current drop to zero so i'm just going to pick one of these sensors and here we go high temp test all right charge over temp protection right there Current drop to zero, so that works as it's designed. So get this cooled back down and get back to charging. All right, back to charging and the alarm has gone away, so high temp protection works. All right, now time for low temp charge protection test. Take my ice pack right here, wrap up one of the sensors and see if it functions. All right, charging under temp protection. So low temp charge protection works. So warm up the sensor and we'll go back to charging. All right, back to charging, excellent. And one other thing I'm noticing on this battery, look at right there, it looks like there's another sticker underneath the mirror pile sticker. Do you wanna see what's under there? What in the world? Are you serious? Hey, that's a two for one review if there ever was one. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that right there? All right, I'm gonna share my final thoughts on the, uh, well, what brand are we calling this one today? Uh, well, you know. <laughs> 
uh, thoughts on the battery. Uh, well, having different age cells is not my favorite thing to see at all. Uh, probably fully serviceable. You'll probably really never know a difference, uh, but it's not common practice to do that. It's just, uh, I don't like that at all. Uh, the wires are marginal at best, uh, marginal. It's got a good JBD BMS. So, so what do y'all think about this battery right here? Uh, dual brand two for one review on this battery right here. I mean, you know, it gave me plenty of capacity, which, you know, it was warm and that's, you know, hopefully you learned something there when you got a warm lithium iron phosphate, you get a little extra fluff out of it. That's why I always try to document my temperatures and stuff on these batteries to show you what temperature I'm running the battery at. So if you've noticed some of my reviews, if I'm testing a battery at 60 degrees, I barely get capacity or just a little over. And the warmer the battery is, the more capacity I get. Matter of fact, I think some of you have requested for me to review this brand right here. So you know, maybe that gives you what you were asking for. So kind of gives you an idea of what to expect from, from either of these brands right here. Couldn't have thought that was ever going to happen, but it did. So please share your thoughts on the dual branded battery today. What do you think after seeing this battery took apart? Would you still be interested in purchasing or using this battery? I think you could be fine using it if you kept the load small on this battery, more of an energy storage battery than a hit battery per se. I wouldn't push this battery near 200 amps at all. And the cells are actually only rated 150 amps per cell. So make note of that as well. Just trying to give you full transparency, everything I found and everything I'm seeing on these batteries. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If you do have an interest in looking further in this battery or purchasing this battery, I'll provide a convenient link in the video description down below so you can easily find it and check current pricing. I'll include the current price in the video description. And at time of filming, it is very budget friendly. Any other questions on this battery or anything I can help with Bluetooth or anything, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to help you out the best of my abilities. Thank y'all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. Special thanks to uh, you and you for providing this sample for today's video so I could test and demonstrate your battery's capabilities. Thank you.